Today, we have some really fun data about battery degradation for Tesla Model S and Model X. This is important because this will tell you when you maybe want to replace that battery, and if you're thinking about buying a Tesla, how long it might last before you need to do that. So this is so exciting for me, and I can't wait to dive in and show you what I found. Hey, thanks for joining me here on Teslanomics. I'm Ben Sullins, and each week what we do is we decode the data behind Tesla because just as nice as it is to look at all the media and the appeal and the, the flashiness of this company that's changing our world, it's also fun to dig into the data and really see what's going on there. So if you're into that kind of thing, please consider joining. Just go ahead and click subscribe down below. It doesn't cost you a thing, and you can unsubscribe anytime you like. My feelings won't be hurt. And for those of you that are already part of the family, thanks for joining me again, and let's just dive right into it. So Martin Steinbuck did some analysis and he has a blog here where he shares this battery degradation data. And it comes from this Google doc that's being updated by a bunch of different people from this Dutch Belgium Tesla forum. And I found this recently from an actual news feed that popped up on Google. And when I dove in, it was really interesting to me because this is such a big question. So many people want to know how long will it last? When will I need to replace my battery? Will I need to be re replace my battery? And so there's so much speculation and Tesla really hasn't released a lot of data about this. So here you have users and they're doing it in a very precise way. They're measuring this by either draining it all the way down to zero and then charging it up to 100%. It's not just like every time they charge, they, they enter the information here. They have a very precise way of doing it. So for me, this is exciting because it's real data. And you can see Martin did some analysis here and he, I would encourage you to read this. I'll put the link in the description. But one thing I found lacking about his charts here were that they weren't very interactive. So let me show you where I'm getting the data from and then I'll jump into the interactive version that I created. So here in the Google Sheet, there are a ton of columns. There's probably 50 to 70 different ones, and each one measures something different. Now, for this analysis, and this will probably be the first video I look at this, but many more to come, you can be sure of that, uh, you can see that we have the mileage. So this is when the reading was done, uh, what was the mileage of the car? Now, this is in kilometers, and I've converted it back and forth uh, in my analysis, and I'll show you that in a second. So I wanted to see that. Uh, what was the mileage? And then if I look for the remaining, you can see the remaining original range. So this is the percent of range that was left after they did their charge. And, and again, there's a precise way that they're measuring this. So I have a lot of confidence in the data that it's at least consistent in its accuracy. So then you have your Canada sheet, which doesn't have much data, but essentially all the same values. You have one for USA, which has a little bit more data. And then the UK doesn't really have much data at all. So I basically combined all four sheets into one, uh, renamed some of these columns to remove these descriptions and things so I could make sense of it, and then built this. Now this is very similar to the chart you saw on Martin's blog, and that's intentional because I think it's a great way to look at this data. The thing that I added here was the ability, not only now you have tool tips, so I can see every single data point here, and I can see my trend line with the p-value and everything else, I can also change the way I'm measuring this. So the y-axis for all of these is the remaining original charge, the percent of charge that is remaining on my battery and that essentially tells you you know how how good the battery is doing or the, the lifespan of the battery and I can choose several different ways here I can choose vehicle age and so for this looking at the data we have here we're looking at close to that one's right on the money they're at 93 percent after four years so still really really good uh, then you can look at mileage, and I've done this two ways. For the kilometer ones, I've taken the US stuff and converted it to kilometers, and then vice versa for the other version there. So if you prefer kilometers, like most of the world, then this one will work for you. And you can see again, after close to 360,000 kilometers, we're still at about 93% remaining of the original charge. So this is really encouraging because that's, first off, a long way and not a lot of people will have their cars for that long and 93% is in my opinion really good um, you know if it were down if it were 20% or more degradation in that time span I'd be really worried but um, this is pretty encouraging and you can see the trend line here is really pretty flat even as it goes out if you look at the miles version of this it's essentially the same trend line and with this you're looking at 222,000 miles with still 
uh, above a 93% remainder of the original charge. So that's amazing. Then you have the charge cycles. And here's where some of the estimates out there say, you know, 10,000 to 20,000 charge cycles. Well, we're not even scratching the surface and we're already really, really far along with the number of years as well as the number of miles that are being driven. So the other thing I put on here was the ability to filter by region. And I thought this was important because with different climates, your battery typically will perform uh, varyingly. It won't always be the same if you're in a warmer climate versus a colder climate. So you can uncheck this and you know remove everything and just look at Asia Pacific and the EU minus the UK. Or you can you know just look at the UK. There isn't too much data there. Add in the US. You can kind of get some more. Maybe US and Canada. And this was just a, another way that I thought would be interesting here to let you analyze this data and see what's going on. So uh, I hope this is interesting to you and I hope you check it out. The link to this will be in the description down below and you can also find it on teslanomics.co. So this is so exciting that we have this data and I want you to participate in it. Go to teslanomics.co, sign up for the email list and you'll get all of the things like this, this data and these workbooks and this analysis delivered to your inbox directly, as well as other links to things and maybe deals we have going on to save you money on things like a thousand bucks off a of Tesla or maybe a discount at EV Annex for your car, whatever the case may be. So go check it out at teslanomics.co. And thank you for those that support us on Patreon. If you wanna become a tighter and closer knit with us, I would suggest going to patreon.com slash teslanomics. And the big deal there is that of the hundreds of thousands of people that watch our videos on YouTube, those that are on Patreon will have all that noise filtered out. You're not gonna get thousands of comments from people that aren't really committed to this community like you are. So if you're really into it and you really love this stuff, please consider uh, pledging uh, whatever amount makes sense for you and you can go check that out at patreon.com slash teslanomics. So thanks again for watching and I will see you guys back here next time.